last year on this field. Maybe one of their most painful losses of the year. Missing a penalty and putting one off the bar in first half stoppage time before losing one to nothing. Then on the 4th of July, the Sounders came to Edmonds Stadium where the Gunners, uh, the Seawolves, pardon, got their maybe biggest win of the year, a one nothing victory on the nation's birthday in Edmonds. Now the rivalry is renewed. Welcome, everybody. We are inside Sunset Chevrolet Stadium in Sumner where the Puget Sound Gunners will square off against the Seattle Sounders under 23s. Hello, everybody. I'm Nathan Murphy, and it's an honor to be with you this afternoon. Thanks for joining us. We uh, would like to thank our presenting sponsor. Today's broadcast of Puget Sound Gunners FC Soccer is presented by Swedish of Issaquah and also sponsored by ProLiance Surgeons and ProLiance Orthopedic and Sports Medicine and by My Spine Sports Chiropractic. Thanks to all of our sponsors for their support, for keeping the Gunners on the air. And we're glad all of you are with us as we're just about to get underway. The starting lineups are out on the field. The officials and the teams have been introduced. And we're going to take a moment to pause for the national anthem, I think. Before we do, we'll take a moment to take a quick look at the lineups. Last week's goal scorer for the Gunners, Michael Dodds, back in the lineup. As is Asha Pollan, who was so dangerous at the front end all day. And now we will take a break for the national anthem. Let's take a quick look at the goalkeepers here. For the Seattle Sounders under 23s, the home team here in Sumner, Jordan Jennings gets the start. The Seattle University man out of Tacoma, local product, has some professional experience. He played last year in Australia for the Sydney United 58s down under and uh, is back with the Sounders under 23s this season. Starting in goal for the Gunners, Spencer Ritchie. Uh, spent much of last year for the University of Washington injured, as we mentioned last week, but uh, managed to earn a point for the Gunners last week against Portland. Michael Dodds, the captain for the Gunners. Michael King, I'm sorry, that's not Dodds, that's Zach Hammond, the uh, former Seawolf, University of Washington man out of Victoria, is the captain for the Gunners. Michael King, I've got these all backwards. I've got the names. Matt Eronimo is your captain. And number six is Michael Baija. He is an NC State man from Tampa, Florida. The officials for this game, the referee is Chuck Spaniola, assistant referees Chris Danforth, and Tony Johnson. The coin toss has been made. The teams are in their final huddles, and we're just about set to get underway here at Sunset Chevrolet Stadium in Sumner. Thanks for joining us, everybody, on this Cool and cloudy Sunday afternoon here in the South Puget Sound. Take an opportunity to remind you that USLPDL.com is your source for scores, statistics, news, and more from the Premier Development League. Make sure and give them a visit for recaps and stats and everything else you need. That's exclusively online at USLPDL.com. Last week, the Sounders under 23 opened their season down in Willamette against Lane United. They took a 1-0 loss there on a goal in the 21st minute by Connor Bevins, who s former Seawolves fans will recognize as having uh, been impactful against North Sound last year. Of course, last week against the Portland Timbers under 23s, these Gunners scored 
about the 61st minute of the match and then less than 10 minutes later gave up an equalizer and ended with a 1-1 draw. We're underway from Sunset Chevrolet Stadium. The kickoff taken by the Sounders and quickly sent down field where it'll be headed out of play by Kevin Cook. Sounders showing no hesitancy to attack early on as it's handled here by Dunker. Has it taken away though and the Gunners will look to go the other way. A Paul on with a nice touch and they send it forward for Wright. Trying to chase it down, being watched there by King, and they'll play it back safely to Jennings. Just underway here. All of 30 seconds into the match. Played out wide, and it'll be a Seattle throw-in. The Sounders in their green and blue home kits that uh, MLS Sounders fans are perfectly familiar with. The Gunners debuting their white jerseys today, the blue shorts, the blue numbers, and the blue socks. A little bit of a collision in the center of the park. It's a foul, says Chuck Spaniola. And a free kick taken quickly by Seattle. And the referee says, no, you didn't. He'll bring it back about 10 yards. Free kick taken, switching fields, looking for Dunker. Instead, it's headed clear. And Apollon will try and, trace, try and chase it down, rather. But instead, it goes out for a Seattle throw. Beautiful afternoon here, a little on the cool side, as we said. Right about 65 degrees at game time, cloud cover, but no rain and very comfortable conditions to play in. The light's good. And a really nice crowd here at Sumner Stadium, probably about 300 or so fans out to watch the home opener for the Sounders, who, as I mentioned, were on the road last week at Lane United. Lane, of course, a new entry in the Northwest Division this year, bringing it up to a square eight teams. Uh, all of those clubs will play 14 games home and away against everybody to determine the division crown. Ball played into the middle by Ritchie. Contesting for the header is right, and it goes back into the gunner's half, but nicely taken by Justice Dirksen. Gives it away, though. Seattle looks to attack the other way. A little bit of a miscue there by Hansen, and it'll go out for a gunner's throw-in. This match, not just part of the Premier Development League as we did last year. We have the Roughneck Cup, the uh, scarf manufacturer sponsoring that. Beat thy neighbor, that's the line that they're using, and it's between the, uh, the four Puget Sound area clubs in the Premier Development League, the Sounders, the Kitsap Pumas, the Gunners, and the Washington Crossfire. Taking a little bit of a knock down there was, that's Jamal Cox. Hopefully he'll be all right. And a Seattle throw on the left side. Trying to play it into the middle is Lee. And the throw-in takes a touch off of a Seattle player. I think that was Cox, and it'll be a gunner's throw. Just underway here in the fourth minute from Sunset Chevrolet Stadium. Nathan Murphy, glad everybody's with us this afternoon. Wherever you are, hope you are having a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. And we thank you for spending a couple hours with us here on Sunday. No score in the early going. Trying to play ahead on the left side for Dirksen, who hesitated just a little bit, and he can't catch up with it after taking the misstep. Seattle switching the fields back for Dunker again. Slides it back into the middle. Give and go was there for a second, but they didn't use it. And Dunker <laughs> keeps it from going out of play there, and he instead hands it back for West. And they'll go all the way back. King across. We mentioned last week Portland was very content to play possession against these guys. But it was the Gunners who drew first blood in the 61st minute. So perhaps a little different strategy and a foul now as going down to the turf is Mark Lee. Trying to see who committed the foul. It looks like, yes, indeed, that was Josh Hurd. And the long ball ahead searching on the right side instead ends up safely in the hands of Spencer Ritchie. A little bit tentative from both teams so far. Not a whole lot of coordinated attack. Little probing actions. The greater of the possession in the early going to Seattle. Run through the middle. Little chip on. He's looking for Wien, but he wasn't there. I'm sorry, that's not Wien. That is Frankie Lopez playing up top with Nico Hansen. And Richie will send it away. 
Just about five minutes gone by here as a throw-in is surrendered to the Gunners about 10 yards into the attacking half for Puget Sound. Throw-in looking for a Paul and got his foot up there a little bit. Right between the referee and the AR, no contact made it looks like. Might have been a little dangerous, but instead it will be a Gunners throw-in. Coming down to take the long throw is Cook. Has a man in the box, can he get it there? Over the top, a little bit of control from right, and he taps it home! Just six minutes into the game, and the Gunners have taken the early lead off the foot of Stephen Wright. It was a long throw from Kevin Cook, and Wright controlled it off his chest, turned beautifully, and slotted it home from just six or seven yards away. Sixth minute of the match, and the Gunners have an early lead in Sumner. It was a dangerous throw in all along, and Kevin Cook managed to take it off the bounce. They say never let the ball bounce in the box. Well, this one did, and it ends up in the back of the net. The goal scored by Wright in the sixth minute, the assist to Cook. Take off, kickoff, pardon, taken quickly by Seattle, but it ends up back in Gunner's possession. A little bit of a shove in the back there on Wright, no call. Instead, it will be contested there in the midfield and finally taken down by Lee. Out of play, take a... Touch off a gunner, says Chris, pardon, Chuck Spaniola, and the throw-in goes to Seattle. Marvelous control on the goal from Stephen Wright to take it down off his chest to his feet and to turn and to slot it past Jordan Jennings had absolutely no chance on that play. Now Seattle on the attack. Played out to the right side, now it's Baja. Shot goes high and wide. Did it take a touch? Yes, it did, said the referee, corner kick. Seventh minute of play, already one to nothing Puget Sound Gunners. And now Seattle will have the corner. Taken short, now played into the area by Baja. Uh, skying to get his hands on it nicely as Spencer Ritchie to avert that danger. That was a nice ball across from Baja. And Richie will put it back down to his feet. You cannot give enough credit on that goal to Kevin Cook, who's throwing. That's, that's a corner kick the way he took that as coming over to handle this one is Jordan Jennings. We mentioned it bounced once in the box and came up high to Wright, who chests it down and turned his man perfectly to slot it home. And this is, I'm almost certain, the earliest goal by far that we've seen from the Gunners slash Seawolves franchise here in the last couple of seasons. We talked a lot last week about the improvement of this club in the attacking third. As the offside flag is up, no whistle yet, and now it comes. Wright was a step too far before he came back to challenge for that one, and now we've got a man down. It's Michael, Michael King, pardon. I didn't see the collision in which he got hurt. I think it was in that interaction with Wright. Uh, did it catch his head? It might have, but it looks like he's uh, grabbing his right knee or his right thigh. I hope he's going to be all right. While they're attending to Mr. King, we'll take a chance to remind everybody that Facebook.com has the official USL Pro fan page and as well the PDL. Make sure and give them a visit. Give them a like. That's Facebook.com slash USL PDL. Eight and a half minutes gone by here as coming over to talk to his assistant is Chuck Spaniola. The assistant on the near side here is Tony Johnson, and we're having a discussion. I'm not sure if Mr. Johnson was indicating a foul or just an offside. Maybe the referee just asking him what he saw. I don't think any action is pending against Wright, but it does uh, unfortunately appear as though Michael King, the defender out of uh, Southern Methodist, is at least a little bit hurt, and now he's up and off under his own power. That's good to see. By law, of course, he'll have to leave as soon as he's ready, and the referee will let him back on. He can return to play, but for the moment, the... Sounders will be a man short. They do have an indirect free kick here, oh, about 15 yards back inside uh, their defending half of the field, a result of the offside call just a minute ago. Tenth minute of play here at Sunset Chevrolet Stadium. Nathan Murphy, glad to be joining you on a cool and cloudy afternoon in Sumner. And as play resumes, they'll go back to Dunker on the left side, certainly something that they like to do in the early going. Head coach Darren Sawatsky, a uh, a possession guy, those field switches, exactly what he wants. Chasing back now is West. Adam West overtaken by right into the area. Right, another shot. This one goes wide. 
Did it take a touch? No, it did not say the officials it'll be a goal kick. That was quite an opportunity for Mr. Wright already on a goal and looking to add to his total, but he couldn't pull that shot far enough around with his right foot. And it goes about three or four yards wide of the post belonging to Jordan Jennings. 11th minute of play here in Sumner. Already the Gunners with a one nothing lead. A beautiful, beautiful play by Stephen Wright to put the Gunners on top early. Multiple headers in the center of the park. Now it falls to the feet of Wright trying to switch outside, but instead he turns it over and they'll play it back. Biza has a man running. This is Hansen. Can he get there? Instead it's Dirksen. He'll play it back into his own penalty area where Spencer Ritchie kind of a, a popped up clearance only about 30 yards from goal. Wright had a chance to take a touch, but instead it falls to West. And they'll play possession again, will the Sounders. A little bit of a miscommunication there between Dunker and Cox, and it rolls out of play for a Gunner's throw-in. Both men thought the other was going to go get it, and then both realized at about the same moment that neither one was. The header this time comes off of Josh Hurd, and possession to Seattle. A little bit longer to retrieve the ball than the last time. I noticed there aren't uh, as many extra soccer balls floating around as we've seen. Uh, at some times there are a few, but uh, we play this one back, and the throw-in will be taken by Dunker. Popped up into the air again. Challenging for it there. And it'll land in the center and taken by Hammond, but he can't control it. Now back for Dunker again on the left side. Seattle settling it down. Biza looking to switch the field again. He's got a man there and he handles it. Watched by Dirksen. A little bit of a touch and now they try and play it further up. Nice overlap run. Now a chance to cross into the middle looking for Hansen, but it's defended away. And it'll be a Sounders throw in. Good aware defending by Justin Dirksen the last few minutes and a nice touch in the middle. I think that was Dodds or Aronimo. I'm not sure which. Now Apollon. Watched by three Sounders there and can't keep possession but does win a throw. Takes it quickly looking into the middle. This is Daniel Smith. Seeing his first action but he turns it over. Nice long run. Has a man on the outside. It's Cox. Cuts it back and a shot. It takes a deflection off the crossbar. And now chested back down. <laughs> nice Alert play by Matt Aronimo. That shot took a deflection right at the top of the area and fooled Spencer Ritchie. It hit the crossbar, so it hits a player and then the crossbar, and Spencer Ritchie had that deflection been a little lower, had no chance at that. A lucky break here for the Gunners. 14th minute now. Still one to nothing. Puget Sound on the early goal by Wright. Jennings puts it down, gives for King, now gets it back and looks on the left side for Dunker. Very active in the early going Austin Dunker. Now he gets it back and hands it for West. Nice little outside of the foot flick by West looking for Biza who has it now. Thought he got fouled. No call says the referee. And Seattle will switch fields again. A lot of long switching balls in the midfield we're seeing from these guys so far. Cuts it up into the middle for Hansen, but they turn it over. Gunners with numbers looking for a Paul on. We'll never know if he was on because the ball never got through and another chance taken there by Ballou and he couldn't hold on to it. Now Jamail Cox on the outside. Can't keep it in touch, or out of touch rather, as we enter the 15th minute. Michael Dodds, the goal scorer last week. Back to his goalkeeper, Richie, and they'll switch field for Dirksen. Now back again for Dodds. And into the center, this is Hammond. And now it's the Gunners who are playing the careful possession game with the lead. A little bit early maybe for parking the bus, but they'll see if Seattle's going to challenge them before they do something with it. They had a run going on the, on the right side. This was Cook. And instead they'll play it through the middle. Now Cook makes another run. He's on side, but chasing it down and getting there first. Nice play by Austin Dunker. Plays it off of Cook and earns a goal kick. That's very good defending there from 
the gentleman from Elon University out of Greenboro, North Carolina. Taken quickly. We're into 16th minute here in Sumner. One to nothing Puget Sound Gunners. Thanks everybody for being with us. Nathan Murphy pleased to be bringing you this one. Apollon making a run. He was a step off. It looked from here that he was off. And yes, indeed, says nearside assistant referee Tony Johnson. Uh, Ash doesn't like the call. I can't imagine that a striker ever would. But that's how that goes. Which one was the free kick, says Chuck Spaniel. Stop the ball first. There we go. And we will continue. Through the middle with it. Baiza looks out to his right. And they'll play it back now. On the ball of Seagal. Seagal into the middle, turns it over. Making a run is Hurd. Has a man coming. Turns back instead. Or has right coming. Now he tries to play it toward right, and it goes off of a defender. And they play up looking for Hansen, and he's got a chance, but instead it'll be defended away by Aronimo. A little bit dangerous for both clubs there. Did it go out of play? Yes, it did, says the far side assistant. That's Chris Danforth and a throw for the Sounders. Looking for Hansen, a little bit of a shield play from Aronimo there, and he'll try and shepherd it all the way out, but he can't keep it from taking a touch off of his own foot. So it'll be a corner kick, the second of the match for the Sounders. So after the injury to King, he uh, has left the match now. And we're trying to see whose replacement is. And it looks like this is Steve Moan, the University of Washington man, a local guy from Kent. And he'll come into the game. And now a shot attempt from Biza. From Cox, rather. And then it's skied over the bar by West. So Michael King leaves the game, unfortunately, just here in the 17th minute, he's replaced by Moan in the defense. You never like to see a guy have to go out early. King took a knock going up for a header against Stephen Wright just shortly after the goal was scored. Seagal with it. Watch there by Wright, who pops it up and off the <laughs> roof of the uh, storage shed there. And not on purpose, of course, took a deflection, and now it'll be a Seattle throw-in in their own defending third. 18th minute of play, Puget Sound with a 1-0 lead. Stephen Wright, your goal scorer. A beautiful play in just outside the six-yard box to take the bounced throw-in from his teammate Cook and turn it, slot it home for his first of the PDL campaign. And it puts Seattle on top just six minutes in. I'm pardon, Puget Sound on top just six minutes into this one. I have to admit, as a Sounders fan, it's a little disconcerting to have Seattle and Puget Sound on the same field. And not only that, I'm supposedly belonging to the, to the one that's not Seattle. A little bit of a unique experience for me here, but we'll go with it. <laughs> 19 minutes along now. Long ball. I think they're looking for a Paul on, but he wasn't running, unfortunately. And so picking it up in the corner of his area is Jordan Jennings. Quick distribution for West. Now Dunker. He's been very involved early on. Now he hands for Lee. Back for Dunker again. Turns it over to Apollon. Tries to step around Adam West. Cuts to the middle. Has a man running on the left side. This is Baloo, but he can't hold on to it. And now they'll drop it back. This is Aronimo pushing up. I'm sorry. This is uh, Justice Dirksen. Overlap from Dirksen, just a little bit too far for him from Brady Ballou. Good attack, though, from the Gunners as we play in the 20th minute of the match. And it'll be a goal kick. Fans will take this chance to remind you to visit the USL Premier Development League on Twitter for all the latest updates, game announcements, broadcast announcements just like ours, results and all of that good stuff, as well as other interesting things from the wonderful social media folks there at, the, at USL. Make sure and visit them and follow them. That's USLPDL, at USLPDL. Seattle 
carefully attacking, has some nice little probing motion. Frank, Frankie Lopez had it. Now they'll play it back into the defense again. This is the new man, Steve Moan. And now a long searching ball. They're looking for Cox. But instead it will be Spencer Ritchie who will get his hands on that one. Nice run by Jamail Cox there on the left side. But the ball was just a little bit too far from him. Play it, says Chuck Spaniola. Richie puts it down, and he'll do just that. Looking for Moan. I'm sorry, that was Moan in defense there. It was looking for right, and a judge to have fouled him was Steve Moan. Free kick just outside the attacking third. Frankie Lopez doing a little bit of a dance there, trying to draw the quick kick into his legs. Chuck Spaniola gives a little bit of a finger wave there, and Frankie backs off. Nice speed from Cox, trying to get around his man, and he does so. Has somebody in the middle. Is he on side? Yes, he is. This is Hanson. Had to slow up a little bit. Now he's got a couple men in the box. Works to his left side for Cox again, just inside the 18. Now he'll drop it back for Dunker. Dunker turns it over. Nice job getting back to take that one was Josh Hurd. But Hurd gives it right back. Trying to slot it through. Turning nicely as Hansen took a little shove, gets a shot off. It took a deflection and didn't get a whole lot of pace behind it as a result. Easily handled there by Spencer Ritchie. 22 minutes along in this one, just about the halfway mark of the first 45. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Nathan Murphy here, the Gunners with an early 1-0 lead, just six minutes into the match. And that's the only score to this point, 1-0 Puget Sound. Chipped up on the left side looking for Brady Ballou. And instead, it'll be shepherded out of play, but it did take a touch off of Bobby Seagal. It'll be the first corner of the match. Pardon, the first corner of the match for the Gunners, anyway. Seattle have had two. And it looks like it'll be Justice Dirks in the left back coming up to take this one. The goal for the Gunners came off of a set piece, but it was a throw in instead of a corner into the area. Hammond heads it, but too high and it'll pop up over the bar. Fans, remember that Nike is a proud supporter of the United Soccer Leagues, including the W League and the PDL. Follow them at Nike Soccer on Twitter for all of the latest Nike Soccer information, and all of us involved in the Premier Development League certainly thank them for their support of this excellent competition. 70, I think they said 73 teams this year across the country in eight divisions playing for not only their division crowns, a chance to make it into the PDL playoffs, but also those coveted slots in the U.S. Open Cup. The uh, non-MLS rounds of that already going on, of course. Several Premier Development League teams involved. And in some years, they've been quite successful. Now an attack. Hansen tries to play it ahead for Seattle, but it touches it just too far, and instead it'll go out for a goal kick. Nearing the end of the 23rd minute of play here in Sumner. At Sunset Chevrolet Stadium, a gorgeous facility for this and a great crowd. Lots of rave green in the stands here on the near side today. Goal kick sails very long. 20 yards into the uh, Seattle end of things before it took a touch on the ground. Wright fighting for it there with Lee, and Lee comes up with the better of it. Taking it away nicely is Daniel Smith. And he is fouled, says Chuck Spaniola. An elbow. Once again, <laughs> it's Frankie Lopez just being a little bit of a, a pest, I suppose you would say, around the free kick. Uh, different referees, different standards in that area. We'll see what Chuck Spaniola wants to do about it. And the Gunners, of course, have the option to ask for the 10 yards. That makes the free kick ceremonial and slows things down just a little bit. Folks, we just like to let everybody know we are broadcasting in HD today. That's a first for us this season. Great connection. We thank the Sounders folks for that as we've got a cross taken into the area. Very disappointed with himself over on that right side is... Nico Hansen, he thought he had a better chance than that, but it's taken right back by the Sounders again. And this time it's Dunker pushing forward. Dunker didn't see the man there, Smith. But it's played right back to the Sounders again. We'll get back to that last thought when the uh, action settles back down here. 
But the Sounders putting together a nice little 30, 40 seconds of attack here. Cox stepping through now. Nicely defended away by Aronimo. But a foul was given against Matt Aronimo. I think, uh, I actually think the foul was taken back a little bit before that. A little bit of a bump given by Stephen, um, pardon me, by Daniel Smith. And that is indeed where they're putting the ball. Referee looking to see what the advantage would be. While they're setting up the free kick, we'll go back to this thought again. We're in HD, first time for us this season. We thank the Sounders for the excellent high-speed connection we've got down here to bring that for you. To uh, use the HD broadcast on YouTube, look for the little gear icon on the bottom. Click on that and put it in. Are we in 720? 720p is your broadcast quality there. So get these beautiful pictures. We thank... Uh, our engineer and producer extraordinaire, Todd Elvig, and Josh on the camera. Nice job, gentlemen. The free kick taken into the wall, and Seattle will look to reset. Playing it all the way back for West. Adam West has a man on the right side. It's Seagal. He steps through, has a man running, but can't get it to him. That was Lopez on the right side, and it's just a little bit out of his reach, and it goes out for a goal kick. 27th minute of play now. We're past the halfway mark of the first half. Nathan Murphy, very, very glad to be with you this afternoon. Thanks for spending part of your holiday weekend with us. And, of course, a special thanks to all of you who are current or former members of the United States military. Thank you all for your service uh, to our country on this Memorial Day weekend and all of the time. Chasing it down is a pall on, and he is a judge to have shoved in the back, Steve Moan, so a free kick to the Sounders. Taken quickly by the goalkeeper, Jennings. And West will move on to the left side. Dumps it into the middle for Lee, back for West. He'll try and switch the field again. He's got a man there, Hansen, but it's defended away well by Dirks and Ballou coming back and challenging Lopez. And now it's Seagal. Hansen on the right side there. Can he keep it in play? Yes, he can. Clearance comes off of Hansen and now headed into the area dangerously. Coming across to take it. Off the shirt, said the referee. Sounders want a handball, none given. Fighting for it still is Hansen and Dirksen. Nice little pat between those two guys. And the throw-in goes out. That was coming across Michael Dodds, who had the goal last week, and it came off of the upper chest area towards his shoulder. The referee, Chuck Spaniola, right there, said it came off the shirt, the uh, chest area. A little bit upset by that were the Sounders and their head coach Darren Sawatsky, but nothing given. Headed clear by right, but not very far. And coming through the back of Austin Dunker was Asha Paulon. That's a foul and a couple fouls in as many minutes by Asha Paulon. He's got to be careful. And now getting a talking to, I think this is Brady Ballou. Chuck Spaniola saying, hey, don't play the ball like that. Close to a yellow card for Mr. Ballou, but none appears to be forthcoming. I was just saying Asha Paulon also needs to be careful. A couple of fouls quickly can get the referee's attention and land you in the book for persistent infringement. Standing over this one is Michael Biza, the captain. Played into the box and instead headed clear. Just a little bit short of getting his head on that was Lee, and instead it comes all the way back out to Biza. Searching ball on the left side for Cox. Unable to get there is Cook, and it's sent away now. Dunker again. The left back for both teams, not afraid to come very high up into the attack as this cross goes all the way through, and Brady Ballou will let it go out for a throw in. 29th minute of play here, one to nothing. Puget Sound Gunners on the early goal by Wright. Can't stress enough how excellent a piece of skill that was. And a quick goal has given the Gunners the lead for the last 26 min 22 minutes or so. Throw-in goes right back out for another one. This one right about midfield. Push him back, says Darren's. Oh, this is a free kick. I'm sorry, a handball was given. But the free kick is given right to Cox, and Seattle will turn it the other way. Cox has a little bit of space. Now he has a man on the left side, but he can't get it to him. Instead, it falls to Lee. 1-2 with Cox, and Lee will play it onto the left side, pardon, the right side. Left side of the defense, rather. And another foul. This one called by the assistant referee. And this one's going to be, I think, says the uh, assistant, this one ought to be a yellow card, or at least a talking to. What are we doing here? Matt Aronimo committed the foul. 
And he's just going to get a little bit of a public chewing out here. That was a borderline tactical foul breaking up an attack. I, I would not be surprised to see a yellow card here, but uh, it looks like he's, well, I'm not sure what he's going to do. Looks like they're looking at his elbow now. Is he bleeding perhaps? Does he have to leave for that reason? Yes, he does. What's the deal, says Jimmy Ball? Blood on the jersey, I think. And so Matt Aronimo will leave the playing surface and find himself another shirt. A little bit of discussion going on here. As, as Todd says, we do have to see what number Matt puts back on. Looks like it's number 19, taking the shirt of Fausto Ordinana. So Eronimo will wear number 19 the rest of the way. We'll make note of that here. And now they're sending him back off again. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on here. As I don't think he's permitted to re-enter for something like this until play has resumed. I, I really don't know what the deal is, but Chuck Spaniola does not seem to be sending him back off the field of play. A lengthy delay here, in addition to the one that we had when Michael King was injured early on, and now he is sending him back off the field, as I suspected he would. Oh, now we've got to change the shorts. It's interesting, the different rules of different sports. In basketball, to take your shirt off in the, uh, in the area of play like this, even to change it out for blood, that's an automatic technical foul. Referees have no discretion there. It's just interesting, the standards that you see in different sports. But in any case, Mr. Aronimo is back on the field. And we're ready to resume play. Dangerous set piece after all of that. <laughs> and it took a nice touch from Frankie Lopez running up on the right side. He wants a corner. He's not going to get one. I think that skipped off of his teammate and over the goal line. And it will be a goal kick. Taken quickly, switching the field is Spencer Ritchie. And he's got a man running, a little bit of a shirt tug. And it wasn't seen by either official. That was really unfortunate as coming down the field, looking for that ball was heard. And from our vantage point, this was pretty easy to see. But we're back into the uh, right side of the play. And the officials were kind of across from each other in a place where that would not have been easy to see from here. You could definitely see the tug on the shirt, pulled Josh Hurd to the ground, but nothing given. Dirksen heads it forward, skips through a couple of people, and now it's Moan who sends it right back to Dirksen. Dodds with it now. 33rd minute of play here. Dodds turns it back for Hammond. Zachary Hammond. Barry University man. I'm sorry, Humboldt State. It's Michael Dodds from Barry University. As turning with it over there is Matt Aronimo. Tried the little overlap run with Dirksen. He tries to chase it down, and he gets a foot on it and falls to the feet of Asha Pollock. Can he keep it? Working against Lee. Cuts it back into the middle. Has right. Cook is coming on the outside on the right, and they'll give it to him now. Apollon making a run forward. Searching ball, looking for him, but it'll skip over everybody, and it'll be handled by Jordan Jennings. About 12 minutes remaining, plus stoppage time here in the first half. There will be likely quite a bit of stoppage time, more than we're used to in the first half of PDL games. We had the injury, and then the long situation a little bit here ago with Matt Aronimo and his uniform. I'm still a little baffled as to what happened there. You're normally for equipment issues like that, the player has to go off and fix it while play continues. But Chuck Spaniolo allowed him to fix it and come back on, and that'll add two or three minutes to our stoppage time here at the end of the first half. Trying to chase it down, but unable to do so is heard, and it'll send back the other way. Now a chance with it is Lopez. Lopez steps over. Now he turns it back. He had a man there briefly, Looks like this is Dumbaya. I missed him coming into the match, but number 18 is on his shirt. That looks like who that is. I'm not sure who he replaced, but in any case, the Sounders take possession back once again. An advantage being played by Chuck Spaniola. The, uh, it looked like an attempt at maybe sending it into the area. It took a skip off of a defender, Daniel Smith, but it comes back to Seattle anyway. This is Lee. Has a man, Dunker. Dunker, the defender, chops it back into the middle for Lopez. Nice little one-two back for Dunker. 
Chance to cross now. Has somebody coming, but it's defended nicely away by Matt Aronimo. Turned right back over to Seattle. Dangerous time right now for the Gunners. But Hurd will send it long. Apollon slipped and fell down and wasn't able to chase that one. And saying, I didn't see that, I'm sorry, says the referee to Josh Hurd, talking about the shirt tug a little bit earlier. Stepping through. It's a through ball, but Cook is there. And will he shield it out for a goal kick? Yes, he will. It's a goal kick. Good defending from the Seattle University man from Beaverton, Oregon. He played at UCSD as well, Kevin Cook. 2013 graduate of Seattle University. Making his debut for the Gunners today. Goal kick. This one spins a little shorter than the last couple we've seen from Spencer Ritchie. Lands right about the midfield stripe. On possession for a moment was Brady Ballou, but his through ball attempt to Apollon takes a deflection and Seattle will settle down. 's with it and he'll play it all the way back for his goalkeeper Jennings and now back for West and Seattle will try it up the left side this time West takes the one two and he hands it back for Biza long ball looking for somebody Seagal I think on the right side of the attack and instead it'll go out for a Seattle throw off the head of Justice Dirksen chance for an early cross here instead they play it into the middle Lopez drops it off. A little bit of contact there. Nothing doing, says the referee, and a chance sending up for a Paul on. Can he get there? Trying to outrace right to the ball. Instead, Wright will get there and play it out for a throw in. That was nicely done by uh, West, pardon me, Adam West, University of Washington man from Gig Harbor. Second year with the Sounders, and yes, indeed, Adam West. A Paul on has a chance to cross now. Physical contact with Cox there, but a clean challenge, says the referee. And the ball comes back to, uh, to uh, Dunker, rather, once again. He had Cox on the left, instead gives it to Beza, Beza, rather. Now in the middle, it's Lee. Beza with a little bit of space, has a man running on the left side. That was Cox, but the ball doesn't quite get to him, and it's turned over there. Stepping ahead after the turnover by Hammond and the long shot from Biza is handled fairly easily by Spencer Ritchie. That one was never going to challenge him from that far. He had the angle played right. And the Gunners will look to go the other way. Foul given now is going down to the turf was Dirksen under the challenge. I think that was Bobby Seagal. A little unhappy with that one. I think Darren Sawatsky giving the little wave off to referee Chuck Spaniola, but rarely has that changed the mind of a referee, and it'll be a free kick for the Gunners. Coaches and referees, a big topic in the world of soccer today, of course, after the Champions League final yesterday. Simeone for Atletico Madrid, running onto the field on multiple occasions, finally getting sent off between the extra time periods. before his club fell uh, ultimately 4-1 to one after draw, um, holding the lead for most of the match. A foul against Hammond now, and a free kick 10 yards into the attacking half for the Sounders. We're in the 39th minute of play. The Gunners still holding on to this 1-0 lead, but the pressure from Seattle continues to build. I think the Gunners will be relieved if they can get this one into the halftime break with the scoreline where it is now. Taken quickly that free kick, once they got the ball anyway. And it's Biza taking a long shot. That never would have been on frame, but it's handled anyway by Spencer Ritchie. 39 minutes complete, six-plus stoppage until halftime. Nathan Murphy with you. Sunset Chevrolet Stadium here in Sumner. A cool and cloudy day, but a nice view through the valley here. And great conditions for playing soccer as long as the rain stays away. Unable to maintain control is Brady Ballou, and they'll settle it down Will the Sounders. Stepping up with it, looking for Lopez. I'm sorry, that's the substitute Dumbaya, rather. And instead, it'll fall to Josh Hurd. He has right on the outside. Can he get it there? He can. He's watched there by Biza. But Wright turns it over. Can't quite get it back, and in Seattle will turn and look the other way. 
And a foul now committed. Very, very frustrated with that play as Jamail Cox. And it looks like the foul was committed by Hurd. And Chuck Spaniola will come over and take a look now. Hurd thought he just went through and took the ball. I think that trailing foot may have caught Cox on the way through. And he's up and limping. Hopefully he'll be uh, able to remain in the match. Just a common foul, says the referee. I'm sorry, it's, uh, it's not Hurd. It looks like it was Hammond. And the referee says, no more of that if you please. So we're back to play now into the 41st minute. And Baiza has a man running on the right. But it's not going to be far enough outside to get to Seagal. And Spencer Ritchie will handle that one. Distribution to the right side of his defense. Dodds sends it up into the middle. A little bit of interplay there. And now Wright has a chance to run, but he can't put a touch on it. And Seagal will play it back to his own goalkeeper, who will send it high and out of play, about 25 yards up the touchline. It'll be a throw in for the Gunners there. Jennings just relieved to get the ball out of play. It happened in the uh, senior Sounders match last night. Uh, Stephen Fry, unfortunately, in a time when you kind of want to put the ball up for a throw in, 25, 30 yards up the pitch, 40 if you can handle it. He popped it into the middle of the park and surrendered the second Vancouver Whitecap goal. Very lucky were the Sounders to get that penalty equalized. Casey Keller spent the rest of the match saying he didn't think it was one. But of course, Casey is a goalkeeper. Now on the attack again is Seattle. Dumbaya. Back for Baiza. Now onto the right side for Seagal. Looking for somewhere to go. Has a man in the middle. This is Dumbaya right on the 18-yard Lee has a chance, tries to slide it through, and it's blocked off there by Dirksen. Turning the other way is Asha Paulon. Has three men to beat. And one man helping him right on the outside, and he gives it to him. Looking through for a Paulon, and he lost his balance a little bit. Tough for us to say if that was on his own or if there was a little push in the back there. But instead, Seattle will settle it down. 43rd minute now. Three-plus stoppage remaining in the first half. Long searching ball for Wien. Chris Wien takes it on the edge of the 18. Turns back toward the middle, retreats a little bit, looking for somewhere to go. This is Dumbaya. And he doesn't manage to keep it. Looking for Wright was that ball, but Wright can't maintain possession, and Seattle will settle down again. I've said it before. I think the Gunners just trying to get to halftime at this point. The Seattle attack has been much more effective in the last 15 or 20 minutes. It hasn't directly threatened the goal more than a couple of times from long distance, but it's still been a little bit nervy here. Stepping through, looking for Dumbaya, and he has him. Harassed there by Matt Aronimo, but he manages to keep possession and hand it out for Seagal. Now an overlap back for Dumbaya. Is that a foul? Yes, it is, committed by Matt Aronimo. Just a foul, says Chuck Spaniola. And I've just been handed a sheet. We thank the Sounders staff for that. We had another jersey change that they didn't tell us about. I've been calling Dumbaya's name for quite a while. He is not in the match. That is still Mr. Hansen, who had been wearing number nine. Nico Hansen now wearing number 18, and we'll correct our sheet here. And we apologize to Mr. Hansen as the ball goes all the way through. I kind of wondered where number nine had gone, but there you have it. Two jersey changes, a little bit unusual here in the first half. So we approach 90 seconds remaining in the first 45. Quite a bit of stoppage time expected after the injury to Mr. Michael King and the long stoppage involving Matt Aronimo's jersey. The throw taken long, but defended away, but not very far. Stepping with it is Lopez. Now Moan. The shot goes all the way through, and Moan took a little bit of a funny touch there. His ankle may have caught the turf as he tried to go through, and they're going to send it out of play. Nice gesture from Spencer Ritchie, and they'll take a look now. And the uh, man who came on for the other guy who got hurt, uh, Steve Moan, replaced Michael King back in, I think, the 18th minute. Looks like he's going to be all right. Back to his feet. And a nice round of applause from the Sounders crowd here. Just about 30 seconds remaining in the first 45 as nice sporting gesture. Jamail Cox plays it back for Michael Dodds. Spencer Ritchie will collect, and this is where we were before. 
Over onto the right side again for Dons. A little bit of a dangerous spot, but his header finds the feet of Cook and back for Hammond. Nice pressure here from Lopez. Cheeky little back heel there from Josh Hurd, but it doesn't do anything. Turns it back over. Lee trying to step through. Little one-two attempt, and the ball skitters through. Clearance there by Aronimo. Nicely done. That'll go out for a Seattle throw, and we've had the 45. And, of course, without the fourth official in his wonderful lighted board we don't have an indication of how many minutes we'll have of extra time here so we'll just go with uh with the old way the referee's whistle will end the half as it always does taking it through the middle now cutting it back was Matt Aronimo try to look for Baloo there and instead it's headed down by Seagal over there and Apollon ends up with it nicely defended by Biza Seagal will get it again. Stephen Wright trying to chase him down. Nice little cut back, and Baiza in the middle once again. Has Dunker on the left, and he'll use that. Heads it back into the center. Now a nice little attack going on here. Carefully defended by Dons, and Aronimo will send it clear. We're in first half stoppage time here. The Gunners clinging to a 1-0 lead under mounting pressure from the Sounders. Stepping through is Baiza. He gets around the first man, tries to cut it back, but cutting off his run was Hansen. If he had continued on there, he might have been offside, but if he'd managed to keep it, he would have been in clear. Over a minute gone by in stoppage time, approaching two. Goal kick taken long. Chuck Spaniola hasn't looked at his watch yet. Apollon sends it on. It'll take that little skittering touch and all the way back through to the goalkeeper. Not a careful thing there. And this is going to be a yellow card, at least. No, it's not. A foul? Sliding through was Steve Moan. Right through Stephen Wright. And uh, I'm not sure what we're going to have here. The assistant referee coming in to help with crowd control. In any case, it's going to be a free kick for the Gunners about 20 yards, I'm sorry, about 10 yards outside of the 18, 20, 30 yards from goal. And what is Chuck Spaniola going to do? He's having a conversation with his assistant now. And they're going to figure out what the, uh, what the result of this is going to be. A miscommunication started this. A little bit of a heavy touch from Jordan Jennings. Looking to give it to Steve Moan, his right back. And a yellow card only. I think a little bit lucky there is Steve Moan. As he came through very hard with his studs up. Now, I, I want to note this was not deliberate by any stretch. He's trying to get to the ball. The ball had gone a little bit beyond him after that heavy touch, and he was trying to get to it, but he really collided heavily with the ankle of Stephen Wright. So he goes into the book in first half stoppage time, the first booking of this one. And a dangerous set piece here, about 27, 28 yards from goal. Still on the ground is Stephen Wright, and now the trainers are going to come out to take a look at him. He really caught this one badly. As I said, this all started when goalkeeper Jordan Jennings, this ball was skipped through off the head of Ash Apollon, and I think that Moan thought that Jennings was going to let it come to him in the area. Instead, he took a touch just outside the 18 in the little semicircle, and very surprised from it, it seemed, was Steve Moan, and he tried to react by sliding and, and pushing the ball past the onrushing right, and instead he caught right pretty heavily in the ankle. As I say, I think a little bit lucky to get away with just a caution there is Steve Moan, but it's probably the correct decision. And still, Mr. Wright is being attended to. And now he's going to be helped back to his feet, and he'll be helped off the field. I think very evidently Stephen Wright's day is done. A very unfortunate uh, result of that play, but a beautiful goal to start things off by Mr. Wright. Uh, he took a touch off of his chest just outside the uh, six-yard box in the sixth minute and turned and slotted at home to give the Gunners the early lead. So now we'll resume with this set piece, and you've got to think that this is very close to the end of the stoppage time that had originally been allotted by Chuck Spaniola, but we shall see. Dirksen standing over it, curls it in, easily handled by Jordan Jennings, and we're going to continue, at least for the time being.
Pushing up quickly is Seattle, and handling it there is Dodds. Lopez chasing it hard, but he can't get there, and it'll go all the way out of play. That is the end of the first half. We've played 45 minutes plus a little bit more here at Sunset Chevrolet Stadium in Sumner. After one, Seattle Sounders under 23 is nothing, and the Puget Sound Gunners won. We'll take a quick break here, and we'll be back with halftime analysis. You're watching Puget Sound Gunners Soccer on YouTube with the premier development.
Welcome back to Sunset Chevrolet Stadium in beautiful Sumner, where the Puget Sound Gunners lead at halftime one to nothing over the Seattle Sounders under 23s. Nathan Murphy back with you here in Sumner. And it was a very eventful, very entertaining first half. Only the one goal, but certainly a, a lot going on. We'll start with the event summary here. In the sixth minute, Stephen Wright scored the so far only goal of the game, and it came off of a throw-in taken by Kevin Cook uh, about uh, maybe 25, 30 yards up the touchline from the corner. And he took it into the 18-yard box. It took a bounce to the chest of Wright, who settled it down perfectly, give a little feint to one side, and turned the other way on his man, who had backed him up nicely, but Wright turned him in the perfect way and slotted at home past a helpless Jordan Jennings for the earliest goal that either Todd or I can remember since we started working with the Seawolves last summer. That was in the sixth minute. Unfortunately, Mr. Wright will not be able to continue, we're being told, after taking a knock in stoppage time of the first half. The only other recordable event was a caution on that play that was given to Steve Moan, who came through the ankle of Mr. Wright. And those are the only events in the box score here in the first half. Two corner kicks for Seattle, just one for the Gunners. And uh, I think we're going to have to... Nope. Yeah, I think we're going to have to take a break as they've turned that music back up. We'll be back again here. Nathan Murphy with you. Uh, Puget Sound Gunners FC.
Welcome back to Sunset Chevrolet Stadium. Nathan Murphy with you here in Sumner. We apologize for not having the uh, audio going during the halftime with the YouTube uh, live stream. We have to be careful if there's music playing in the background that we don't get the stream cut off. We'd uh, rather use my penetrating halftime analysis than not be able to listen to the second half, which is now underway. The Gunners with the kickoff here. They lead it one to nothing on a goal from Stephen Wright. Uh, who unfortunately, oh, it looks like he's still in the match. I'm honestly a little surprised to see that, but Wright is out there to begin the second half, and we'll see how long he continues as Brady Ballou takes down Michael Biza. Just underway here in the second half, we'll try and figure out what substitutions were made at halftime. We weren't given those, but we'll get them along to you as we notice them. Nothing I've noticed to this point. Uh, it looks like Eric Urzura is in the match for the Gunners. Uh, looks like he's playing a defensive midfield role, maybe in uh, where Hammond was. I think Hammond may be the man who left, as I don't see him out there. So Eric Urzura into the central defensive midfield role now. Trying to chase this one down is right, and he can't get there. And West sends it ahead, but out of play. It took a deflection off a gunner. It'll be a Seattle throw-in. A little bit of a rivalry between these two clubs after last year when they traded one nothing home victories here in Sumner and up in Edmonds. The latter on the 4th of July, certainly the biggest home date that the then Seawolves had last year. And once again, the Sounders will come to this franchise on the 4th. And it looks like the foul is going to be given. I'm not sure Brady Ballou is still barking at, uh, at the referee here, but the foul was given, and Ballou will take the free kick just inside his own half. Less than two minutes gone by here in half number two. We're glad all of you are with us. Thanks for spending part of your holiday weekend with us, and I'll take a chance once again to thank all of our current and former servicemen and women who may be listening today. Thank you very much for what you've done for our country, and we remember your fallen comrades on this Memorial Day. Memorial Day weekend, rather. Two minutes gone by here in half number two. The Gunners lead it one to nothing here at Sunset Chevrolet Stadium in Sumner. Great crowd out here for this one as the Sounders under-23s get a little bit of a following, some help from the uh, Sounders uh, senior-level fan base. A good number of the ECS will show up to these matches. The Famous yachting cap is in the house to watch the Sounders and the Gunners here today. It's a great sized crowd. It looks to be pushing maybe four or five hundred. It's tough to estimate from our vantage point, but a very, very good crowd here. Up through the middle with it is Wright. Has a man. This is heard on the outside, but it's a little bit a little bit behind him and he can't catch up with it. Another substitution we've noticed. Now Mohamed Dumbaya is in the match. Uh, he is indeed, and we're trying to see, did he replace the guy who was wearing his jersey? I think he did. So, nope, back with the number nine on. So Hansen has his number nine on once again, and Dumbaya, Mo Dumbaya, is in the match wearing number 18. Down to the deck goes Mr. Hansen, no whistle. And challenging Adam West is Asha Paul on, but West keeps it in play and gets it to Hansen. Hansen gets it back again. He'll try and challenge. Cook watching him there. Gives it back for Dunker. Stepping to the inside for Cox. Nice little one-two given for Hansen. Steps into the area, but shielded. Oh, that was a little dangerous, but shielded back to his goalkeeper. And again, wearing his own number four is Matt Aronimo. So it looks like all the numbers are back to where they ought to be. As a collision there between Asha Paulon and Steve Moan. Back to the goalkeeper, Jennings. Skies it. Long kick there. Maybe a little bit of wind. The flag is still, so probably not. But the goalkeepers at my left have done a nice job of sending the ball long. As Moan sends it back through the middle. And this is Cox for Hansen. Back for Cox. Shouldered there by Daniel Smith. Check that. I'm sorry. That's Urzura. And eventually it's taken and... Sending up looking for a Paul on, but Moan will check it back out for a throw in. Asking, 
Gunner's throw in taken. Turning with it is Daniel Smith. Switch the fields for Hurd. He has a man on the outside. Turning with it. And going out for another throw in. This is Kevin Cook, the defender, working up on the right. The outside backs of both clubs not afraid in the DeAndre Yedlin mold to work up into the attack. Justice Dirksen on the left for the Gunners. Austin Dunker on the left side of the Sounders back line. Long throw in taken by Cook. It falls to right again almost. Now Ballou a shot and a goal! Two times a throw in by Cook into the area and two times a Gunners goal. This one is Brady Ballou. Unbelievable work by the defender Kevin Cook who came up to take that throw in once again. It bounced into the area. It went past Wright who had a shot at it and instead it's Brady Ballou. He took the volley up over his head and put it into the goal. It's 2-0 Gunners in the 51st. What a weapon Puget Sound has in its right back Kevin Cook. The ability to throw the ball in like that and the, the Sounders look like they don't know how to handle that. Kickoff taken quickly and they'll work ahead looking for Dumbaya into the area and instead it's handled there by Richie. Two to nothing Puget Sound on two goals scored off of throw in set pieces, that rarest of set piece goals. Both times the ball allowed to bounce in the box and both times it finds its way into the back of the net, this time in the 51st minute. And it's Brady Ballou, the Sea Wolf for a couple of years, the Marysville product, Seattle University man. Huge afternoon for the Gunners so far. They have a 2 to nothing lead. Two assists for Kevin Cook. I don't know if we can officially give him the assists, but I'm going to because it's remarkable play in both occasions. What a weapon for Puget Sound in his first appearance for the Gunners. Kevin Cook, two goals as we have a substitution here for Seattle. It looks like Cox is going to leave the match, and he'll be replaced by Luis Estevez who will step into the midfield. Making some changes, Darren Sawatsky looking for a spark of offense. Hasn't been there thus far, and the Sounders trail 2 to nothing on their home opener. Throw in for the Gunners. Cook takes it quickly, looking for something to do with it, and instead the Sounders will turn back, but it'll land again at the feet of Smith. Daniel Smith ahead for Hurd, turns nicely around Moan, and he'll draw the foul as Moan got his arm up a little bit in to Josh Hurd. Hurd pops back up to his feet, but it'll be a, another set-piece opportunity, this one about 30 yards from goal. And Brady Ballou, who just put one in the back of the net a moment ago, will step up now in the 53rd minute and see what he can do with this set-piece. A little bit far for a shot, but that's certainly possible. Five men on the left side of the penalty area in the white shirts. Four men in the wall for Seattle. Ballou steps away now, and Cook takes it right into the wall. And if he can get there quickly, Dumbaya will have a chance to run, but his touch is a little heavy, and it goes out of play. Fans, the PDL is on YouTube, as you ought to know, since you're watching us here right now. YouTube is this year the league's official home for video, offering live games, feature content, and highlights as well. Make sure and subscribe for free to the USL PDL channel and, of course, to the Puget Sound Gunners. We're at youtube.com slash user slash Puget Sound Gunners FC. And as a reminder for those of you just joining us, we are in high definition today. Click on that little gear icon at the bottom right of the video and select 720p for these beautiful pictures. Nice job by Josh Elvig on the camera, Todd Elvig, our producer. We thank both of them for their excellent work. My name's Nathan Murphy, and it's an honor to be with all of you here this afternoon. Thank you for spending part of your holiday weekend with us. 54th minute, 55th now as we cross over. And the Gunners have a 2-0 lead on an excellent offensive exhibition, primarily pushed ahead by a couple of throw-ins from Mr. Cook. Kevin Cook and a, and a whistle and a foul and a caution maybe. An incident certainly as playing the ball, Michael Biza after the whistle had gone, played it into the man on the ground and the referee ushers Biza away. Will he give the yellow card? He's gone to his pocket and I think that is what we're going to have here, a caution to Michael Biza in the 55th minute. You, you just can't do that when the ball's been Whistled dead and a man's on the ground. You can't, you can't play it into him like that. 
Um, depending on circumstance, maybe a bit unlucky, but the referee was right there. And you got to hear the whistle. So an unfortunate, maybe unlucky caution, but into the book goes Michael Biza. Second booking of the game, both of them against Seattle thus far. Long ball looking for a pawl on, but he can't get up. And he uh, committed a foul himself. And as I said before, I think he's on the edge of a caution. Do we have a substitution? Not. Yes, we do. Upcoming is the assistant referee and another Seattle change. Leaving, it looks like, is number nine, Nico Hansen. So after all of that information with his jersey, he's going to leave now here in the 56th. And it looks like he'll be replaced by Esteban Reyes or from Bellevue College out of Bothell. Second year with the Sounders under 23s. And he'll move into the attack for Seattle as the ball is played away. Trying to hold on to it was heard, but instead it'll roll out for a Seattle throw. So Hansen leaves the game. Hansen looked very dangerous for a portion of that first half as the ball onto the other side, onto the right for Seagal. Chips across high up into the air. Dumbaya trying to run back onto it. And a little bit of a touch got on it by Baiza. He tried to skip it off the turf, but he didn't get a lot of power behind it, and it's easily handled by Spencer Ritchie. Baiza puts his head in his hands a little bit, and he wants that chance back, and I can't blame him. The Gunners still lead this one 2 to nothing over the Sounders under 23s, as Jordan Jennings will play it to his right back, Bobby Seagal. This time they're looking for Dumbaya, who tries to win it from Aronimo, but coming back to take it is Smith. Smith gets tripped up by Dumbaya, and that will be a foul just inside the Gunners' half of the field. Fifty-seven minutes almost gone, almost into the 58th here at Sunset Chevrolet Stadium in Sumner. Thanks, everybody, for being with us. Great crowd here in the stadium. Great crowd on YouTube. Welcome to all of you Gunners fans, Sounders fans. We're thrilled to have everybody on board. I'd like to take a minute to thank our presenting sponsor, at Swedish Avisaqua, the hometown of the Gunners this season. Thanks for their support. Gunners FC Soccer is also sponsored by ProLiance Surgeons and ProLiance Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, and also by My Spine Sports Chiropractic. Thanks to all of our sponsors for their support. Thanks also to the Sounders for being such gracious hosts for the afternoon as that ball hits the referee and turning with it and getting taken down was Smith. But Daniel Smith doesn't get the benefit of the call there. I think we're just glad, and this will be a foul. And this will be a yellow card after that challenge as taking down the left back, Austin Dunker. We're trying to see who the caution was given to. The Gunners' jerseys don't have numbers on the front, but I think the caution is against Michael Dodds. And we'll wait for the confirmation from the announcement there. Either way, it's in the 58th minute. And it'll be a set piece oh, about 10 or 15 yards outside of the 18. 14 yards by the looks of it outside of the 18-yard box. Looks like the caution is to herd for Seattle. So he will go into the book in the 58th. And we're being told the attendance here just shy of 400. That's a great crowd here at Sunset Chevrolet Stadium. The shot on the set piece, it's a good one, and tipped over the bar. Excellent athletic goaltending from Spencer Ritchie to prevent a goal there. What a set piece. I'm trying to see who this was. He's got his side facing me as he comes over to take the corner kick, and this is the captain, Michael Biza. Very, very well taken shot on that set piece, and now he'll come over and take the corner. It's the third for the Sounders, the, sec the first of the second half, rather. It's taken to the far post, and it gets ahead on it from Moan, but he just can't quite get up on top of it, and instead it sails through the football goal posts and a goal kick. Fans, a reminder that Nike is a proud sponsor of the United Soccer Leagues, including the W League and the Premier Development League. Thank you for their support, and make sure and follow them at Nike Soccer on Twitter. That's at Nike Soccer on Twitter for all of the latest Nike soccer information. Thanks for their support. We couldn't be doing this without them. The league couldn't be doing it at all. And a touch through by Apollon. Is it a goal? It is, it is a goal. Ash Apollon gets his first of the year. A casual touch back to Jordan Jennings, and he couldn't get there in time as Apollon snuck through and slipped it around the Seattle goalkeeper and tucked it into the back of the net. 
60th minute of play, and it's Gunners 3, and the Sounders nothing. Asha Pollon, what an aware play, and a, a little bit of a sneaky play to get to that ball. I don't think Jennings saw him coming. Apollon did not have the first half that he had last week. He was very dangerous all week against, or all day against Portland last week. And he's been a little quieter today, but he makes his voice heard here with a goal in the 60th minute. Ash Apollon unassisted. You just can't say enough about what the Gunners have done in the offensive third today. Absolutely phenomenal performance from them. And there's half an hour to go. Three to nothing they lead this one. The goal's from right from Ballou, both of those coming on throw-ins from Kevin Cook into the area, and then from Apollon, who stole the back pass, more or less, and stepped around the goalkeeper Jennings to slot it home. An offensive explosion from the Gunners here this afternoon as Brady Ballou plays it back. And now, if you're the Gunners, you just got to protect, but you don't want to change too much what you're doing. You want to think ahead to next week and also to making sure you don't kind of put yourself out of form because these Sounders, we know they can be dangerous. We've seen it before. And we also saw it against Vancouver last year when the Gunners, the Seawolves rather, thought they had it wrapped up and gave up two quick goals in the last six minutes of the match to lose a heartbreaker at home. So you can't rest back on your heels regardless. But the Gunners got to be feeling good about their effort through the first two-thirds of this one today. Seattle has to press forward a little bit now, and it's Biza. Looking for the right back. And Dunker gets it once again. Trying to cross it into the middle for Dumbaya, but instead it comes back out. And it'll be played there by Urzua. Urzua, rather, and he draws a foul. We're in the 62nd minute at Sumner High School, Sunset Chevrolet Stadium here. It's a cool and cloudy afternoon. The clouds look like they're coming a little lower the uh, view of the trees further down the valley getting a little more and more obscured as time goes on, but the rain has thus far stayed away. Beautiful afternoon. Conditions to play soccer are excellent, and the Gunners have taken fullest advantage. Three goals in the first 60 minutes, and that is the scoreline, 3-0. to nil. Dumbaya with a chance to run. Tries to work around Dirksen, and it's cleared away by Matt Aronimo for a throw in right about the midfield stripe. Nathan Murphy with you. Glad to have everybody along. Thanks for being with us. Make sure and follow the page and get updates whenever we set up an event for another broadcast. Planning to do most, if not all, of the home games this year. The rest of those, I think, will be at Issaquah High School. Make sure and come out and join us. We'll get the schedule for you here in a little bit as Seattle tries to play it back forward. Big crunching collision there with Matt Hurd. Josh Hurd, rather, uh, with Austin Dunker. Turning back with it is Dodds and now Cook. Good pressure from the Sounders up top, but they haven't managed to put together anything in terms of an attack in the last five or ten minutes. And they'll drop it back again. With it was Estevez. And now a foul is going through Dunker was Josh Hurd. Second collision in as many minutes between those two. Set piece a little bit too far from a shot here, but wide out to the left. Certainly a chance to take a shot. We'll see what they do. Biza takes it. It's good. It's toward goal, but not able to get onto the end of it was the recently arrived Esteban Reyes, and instead it goes out for a goal kick. That was a well-taken service. And Reyes maybe just another step and a half from getting his head on that one. And it would have been very tough for Spencer Ritchie to stop. His positioning was pretty good, but those are quick. And unless it comes right at you, you don't usually have much of a chance. Goal kick lands back in the possession of Seattle. Turning it back to the center is Seagal. Now Biza. And across for Dunker. Seattle's back line pushing forward now. Trying to step through with it. And instead, it's turned away by Cook, away from the foot of Estevez. It'll be a Seattle throw-in. Close down toward the corner flag, but definitely a throw-in, says the referee. Not far down enough now, says Chuck Spaniola. We got to get down here. And now we'll get back to play. Chance to take a long throw-in into the area. 
Takes a touch off of Estevez. He'll try and get back again. And instead it will fall to Smith, but he doesn't get it very far, only to Biza. Sends it back in off of a man, and I'm not sure who that was, but off of a gunner anyway. And they'll slip it up, making an overlap run is Dirksen. He's got Ash Apollon. on. Instead he'll cut it back to the middle and take it long looking for right. He has to slow up. He's got three green shirts around him, so he'll take a shot, but it's high and over the bar for a goal kick. Fans will take this chance to remind you that Twitter has the USL PDL handle for lots of great stuff. Game uh, broadcast announcements just like this one. Uh, results, highlights, analysis, and more. Make sure and give them a follow at USL PDL on Twitter. And make sure and follow the Gunners as well. We're at Puget Sound FC. That's at Puget Sound FC on Twitter. Give them a follow also. And thanks, everybody, thanks to everybody rather for watching this afternoon. Chipped into the area for Estevez. Trying to get back is Aronimo, and what's it going to be? Goal kick, says the referee. Nice threatening moment there from Luis Estevez. But nothing more than a goal kick. We finally do have the schedule up. Uh, two games in the Portland area for the Gunners next weekend. They'll make the two-game road swing on Friday afternoon. Friday uh, morning, rather, 11 o'clock on Friday. They'll play at Portland at Providence Park, formerly Jeldwin Field, the big stadium where the senior Portland Timbers play. Certainly will be a, an interesting and uh, memorable experience for those guys. They drew against Portland, of course, last week, and they'll look for another result on the road. And then they'll turn around the next day and play at Lane United in Willamette. And that's at 1 o'clock on Saturday for those of you who may be making the trip down to Portland. Neither of those games... I'm sorry? A little bit of rain going on now? It is raining. That's a good eye. The rain has not stayed away any longer. I may have jinxed it. So everything's wet now. As the long ball, this is Estevez. He's got a chance. Can he get it off his head? Back for Dumbaya, and it's in! An excellent play as Luis Estevez chasing the ball down to the goal line. Touch around Spencer Ritchie. And he couldn't get it into the goal himself, but he managed to get it back for Mo Dumbaya. And it's a not a clean sheet any longer for Spencer Ritchie. Seattle's on the board in the 68th minute. And that, my friends, was some beautiful attacking soccer by Seattle as they pushed into the area kind of quickly after the ball had handled in the midfield, settled in the midfield for a while. And then just very quickly an attack pushed forward by Luis Estevez. And he heads it back to his teammate Dumbaya who slots it home off of his own head. And it's 3-1 to one now. I told you the Gunners couldn't afford to rest. And, you know, a two-goal lead, you're always a little bit nervous. If they can get another one in the next 15 or 20 minutes, it's going to be nervous time for the Gunners the rest of the way. Defending has to be at a premium here as we chalk the goal up in the 67th minute with the assist, as we mentioned, to Esteban Reyes. Yes, Esteban Reyes. I'm sorry, I had said Luis Estevez. One is a first name, the other is the last. Esteban Reyes is the assisting player on this one, number 22. So he gets the assist in the 67th minute. And Seattle's on the board. Free kick now taken by Aronimo. Sends it long and too long for Ash Apollon. Handled there by Jennings. 69th minute of play now here at Sunset Chevrolet Stadium. 3-1 to one the score. The Gunners with the advantage, but Seattle looking very dangerous. And defending ahead to do, we've got about 25 minutes worth of it for the uh, Gunners to try and hang on for a victory. Road points always huge, but you'd much rather have three than one as the throw-in goes to the Gunners. Both teams have some substitutions remaining. And the Gunners players are all up over there on the far side to our left. And a couple of the Seattle men are up as well, getting loose, as Todd so rightly pointed out to me, in the rain. Chopping it back for Dirksen. Aronimo behind him. Takes it carefully, cuts it back again, and now he'll touch it back for Dirksen. Dirksen has a little bit of space, but he can't control it or keep it in play. And a throw in for Seattle, taken quickly by Seagal. Cutting back to the middle is Lee. Now it's the man who assisted on the goal just a moment ago. Send into the middle. And turn around a chance again for Dubai. What a save by Spencer Ritchie. A huge moment. Not clear yet. 
Turned away up the middle. Spencer Ritchie comes up huge as another chance for Dumbaya. And Spencer Ritchie closes the door. Trying to break the other way is Ballou. Fast and furious, the action coming right now. Sent over to the left side by Biza. Looking for a long shot maybe or a cross and send back into the middle for Lee. Dumbaya looking very dangerous at the top of the area, but it pops back up for Seagal. Baiza, the captain, settles now up onto the left side. Trying to step through and a foul. Definitely a foul, perhaps borderline a, a tactical one there. Nothing given by the referee, Chuck Spaniola. I've learned last week in this that I wonder about many more cards than actually come out of the pockets of referees in this league. But I suppose that's much more on me than it is on them. In any case, the free kick to Seattle, five yards outside of the uh, left-hand corner of the 18-yard area. Three men, two men in the Puget Sound wall. Six or seven green shirts in the area, a couple more lurking just outside. Standing over the free kick is Biza. He takes it toward goal, but too high, and over the top for a goal kick. Another dangerous moment as we play in the 71st minute. 20 minutes plus stoppage for the Gunners to defend and try and hang on to this lead. And, you know, in, the, in this moment, it feels a little more sensitive than maybe it should with a two-goal lead. Seattle looking very, very dangerous. And only the perfect positioning of Spencer Ritchie in the 69th minute prevented a second goal in just a few minutes' time by Mo Dumbaya. Long ball sent looking for Reyes. He can't get there. It'll go out for a throw into the Gunners. Puget Sound hasn't spent since their third goal, and even before that, they haven't spent a lot of time out of their own half. Excellent possession by Seattle, excellent attack, and looking very dangerous, as I've been saying. Shuffled out toward Biza. Now Dunker. I'm sorry, that's not Dunker, that's Moan. And now Seattle will switch the field again. Seagal is the right back. Back again for Moan. Steve Moan will send it long. He's looking for Reyes. Can't get there. Turned over by Hurd. Reyes has a chance, and he drops it back. He thought Dunker was going to stay put. Dunker was thinking overlap. Reyes is there on the outside. Instead, they try and slot it through for Dumbaya right at the edge of the 18. The cross comes in, but Matt Aronimo is there and chops it high in the air and out for a, a throw-in. It went over the touchline. 73rd minute now. Jimmy Ball wants to know something from the senior assistant. Chuck Spaniola wants to know something from the referee. Both coaches a little unhappy right now. Shot taken. Handled, oh, a little bit of a scary moment there as Spencer Ritchie couldn't keep his hands on it but manages to get them on before anyone else could get there. And I think the run of Dumbaya carried him just a little bit past the goalkeeper Ritchie. If he'd slowed up sooner, he might have had a shot at that. A Paul on jostling with Moan. Play on, says the referee. Moan very unhappy with that. Slotted through by Ballou, looking for a Paul on. Can he get to the goal line? He can't. And it'll be another foul on Asha Paul on. That's his fourth or fifth of the game. There's no set number, of course, to uh, send you into the book for persistent infringement, but referees have that option when a, f a player continues to violate the laws to commit fouls. Nothing yet, uh, not really even a discussion with him from Chuck Spaniola, though. And they'll play it through looking for Seagal on the right side. Chops it back into the middle for Lee. Nice little ball turning with it. And chop back into the middle. Lurking again was Dumbaya, but it's alertly handled by Spencer Ritchie. A nice job getting through by Chris Weehan to chop it back and try and cross it. But Ritchie gets down and gets his hands on that one. The clock very much a factor here. 74 minutes gone by. That means we're in the 75th. 16 plus stoppage for the Gunners to try and hang on for a victory here at sunset. Chopped back by Dodds. Handled by Dunker. And oh, Apollon grabs a hold of Dunker and pulls him down. Ash Apollon very unhappy right now. He thinks that Dunker caused that contact. Certainly both of them responsible. Asha Paula needs to be very careful here. In addition to multiple fouls, he's also excoriating the referee here, and now we've got something going on. 
Jimmy Ball is saying that the, the assistant referee was thinking the other way. I don't think that's the case. His left hand was up, and that means he was going to point down towards the Sounders' end of the field. In any case, we do have a substitution for the Gunners. Finally, actually leaving the game, I thought he had left at halftime, but Stephen Wright stuck it out for a while, and we'll see who his replacement is. It looks like this is Max Smith, his first appearance out of Juno and Walla Walla College in the NWAC. In any case, uh, we're back to play now. Spencer Ritchie handles it. And he'll send it long. Apollon and Moan again tangle. And now it's Ballou on the left side. Has an overlap coming from Dirksen, and instead he'll try and cut it back. Into the middle for Urzua. Now onto the right for Cook. He's got the two assists off of the throw-ins. Hurd tries to chip it over on the overlap. And... Heading it back was Max Smith, who just came on. That's his first touch. Dangerous ball there as Apollon almost got a foot on that as West tried to switch the field, but he manages to get it first to Moan and then eventually to Seagal. Sending it long, has a man up there, but he can't get it to him, and Dunker will chase it down. It'll be a Seattle throw in again. 76 minutes gone by now. 14-plus stoppage left to go. Seagal making a run on the right. Instead, they try and go through the middle, and it falls to the captain, Biza. Now they will go for Seagal. Closed down by Ballou, and a nice run around Dirksen, but slipping on the wet turf is Dumbaya. Very frustrated, but he wins the ball again, and instead it will go out for a goal kick. Seattle frustrated with that. It certainly looked from here as though Dirksen tried to clear it up and off Dumbaya, and instead it went off of his leg and over the goal line, but they thought that did Seattle... the that it took a touch off of the Puget Sound man. We'll take this chance to remind you that the USL Pro and the PDL fan pages are on Facebook. For the PDL, visit facebook.com slash PDL. Make sure and go and like them today. The Gunners are also on Facebook at Puget Sound Gunners FC. Big collision there. And the foul will be coming out as going up to play the ball was Michael Dodds, and coming through him, we'll tell you who that was. I think it might be Luis Estevez. And indeed it is. He came through. He, he was moving forward as it was in the air, and going up pretty straight was Dodds. So Estevez judged to have cleared out the Gunners defender, and it'll be a free kick, and Cook will take it. 78th minute of play now. 12 and a half left in the ninety. Nathan Murphy with you at Sunset Chevrolet Stadium. Thanks to everyone for being with us. For a 3-1 game, it's a very tight affair here in the latter stages as Seattle's put together a good deal of pressure and another through ball looking for Reyes. Reyes had to slow up a little bit to get it, and Puget Sound manages to settle down and a on fouls Adam West. That's a six or seven fouls, and I continue to be surprised that Ash Apollon hasn't gone into the book yet. None of the fouls have been particularly physical. None of them have been tactical. But he's committed a great deal of them. And uh, certainly Seattle has noticed this. They're getting frustrated with him. Headed clear, but not very far. Just outside the 18. And now another foul against Seattle in its attacking third. Upset with the referee is the captain, Michael Biza. He gets the explanation he wanted. And he'll jog back to defend this free kick. Spencer Ritchie will take it just a couple yards outside of his own area. Beautiful soccer from Seattle to get on the board, but Puget Sound still has that 3-1 to one lead here as we play into the 79th minute. Ball bounces around off of a couple players in the midfield before it's taken by Wien, and he'll turn back to Adam West. The left center back. Tries to play it up looking for Reyes, but he can't get it there. Now it's Esteban. Or Estevez, rather. Now they've got a runner on the right side. <laughs> Too far behind everybody, but it took a touch off of a gunner, so it'll be a throw-in for Bobby Seagal. And he's got a man in the box. This is Dumbaya. Mo Dumbaya. Can't control it. Goal kick. And we have another substitution by the Gunners. We'll see the change made. As we're in the 80th minute now, 10 and a half to go in the 90. 
Still 3-1 to one your score. The Gunners have the lead here as Asha Pollon, who got his first goal of the year, will depart. And we'll see who his replacement is. Is it a like-for-like -like switch, or are the Gunners thinking defense? Still waiting. As we've mentioned, the Gunners don't have the numbers on the front of the kits, so we have to wait until the men turn around to tell us who they are. And it appears that this is Justin Amundsen. He lent his shirt, of course, in the first half, but he's got it back now. And the quick throw-in taken by Seattle. Wien gives it for L Reyes. And it's turned up into the air. First touch by Amundsen. And it'll be forced all the way back to Jordan Jennings. We're past the 80th minute now. Less than 10 remaining in the 90. 3-1 to one the score. The Gunners off of goals by Wright, Ballou, and Apollon. Two of those coming in the second half. Two of those assists coming off of throw-ins into the penalty area by Kevin Cook. The goal for Seattle in the 67th minute by Mo Dumbaya, and he nearly had another one two or three minutes later. A perfect positional save by Spencer Ritchie managed to keep this a two-goal game. We approach 81 minutes gone. Cook has another chance to throw it now. Play the ball, says the referee, and Cook instead will drop it back. Urzua with it. Back for Cook, and the Gunners will turn it into the area now couple of white shirts looking for it but instead it's handled by the men in blue and green sent up the line but only as far as Dirksen and he'll hand it for Ballou Ballou tries to touch around and it takes a touch off Wien and comes back one there from Ballou nicely by Lee but he turns it back over for Hurd Joshua Hurd on the right side has a man coming this is the new this is the new arrival Max Smith Smith can't keep control and now turning up on the right side out of play and a Gunners throw in 82 almost 82 minutes gone by time running very short for Seattle now now the referee coming over to have a conversation what have we I think we've got a substitution now West will leave the game. A nice performance from him. Very steady at the back. And he'll be replaced by Derek Johnson, the Tacoma product, Pacific Lutheran University man, making his first appearance at home for the Sounders this season. The throw and taken and heard on the ball, working against a couple of men. Watched there, and it'll go out for another Gunner's throw in. Coming over to take it is Kevin Cook. 82 minutes plus gone by. Just over seven remaining in the 90. Gunners fans just want to see the clock keep on moving. Seattle has a lot of work to do if they want to equalize in seven plus stoppage. Long run up from Cook. Trying to make sure the assistant's not in his way. And he does unleash one into the area. But this time Dunker will head it clear. And Wien will take in turn now. A little bit of space for the Sounders. He's got a man ahead. It's Dumbaya. Can he get there before the goalkeeper? No, he can't. Spencer Ritchie way off his line to play that safely out over the touchline, and he'll get back into his six-yard box quickly. Seattle takes it. This is the captain, Biza. Into the middle, and Biza can't hold on to that, and it'll be a Puget Sound throw in now. White shirts want to move the ball the other way. Kill time. Green shirts have a lot of work cut out for them. Turnover, though, by the Gunners. And chipped ahead by Biza. Nicely controlled there by Reyes. Back for Biza. Now into the middle. Got an overlap run by the new arrival, Johnson. But he can't get it through. And it'll go all the way back to midfield and to the back four. Moan. Out onto the right for Seagal. Sends it through looking for Dumbaya. Off his chest has a man back there, Lee. But he can't get there. And instead, Josh Hurd will send it all the way back. The Gunners perfectly content to clear the ball down the field and kill some clock here. Seattle pressing the attack and a foul given as trying to step through was Eric Urzua and he was wrapped up there by the man. I can't tell you who it was. Urzua's too big. I can't see through him. 
very, very tall Eric Azua, the Peninsula College man from Portland, and taken kind of quickly, and trying to step ahead with it is Hurd. Down to the deck he goes. Gives up possession, and Seattle will turn it back the other way, but only as far as Cook. Now taken by Reyes, and Seattle will look to press ahead, but once again Cook will let it, and this will go out of play for a Seattle pardon. It'll go out for a Puget Sound throw. I thought Cook took a touch there, but no say the officials. High looping throw-in goes out of play. This time it is a Seattle throw-in. Kind of frustrated there is Hurd. Uh, correction, that is Amundsen, but nothing is given him. 85 minutes now gone by. Just under five remaining in the 90. Just got to defend, say the Gunners. Seattle looking to press forward. They've only got a few men behind the ball. A searching header trying to run it down is Dumbaya, who's been very dangerous here in the second half, but Dirksen handles it calmly and sends it back into the middle for Daniel Smith. Now it's Urzua, and he's fouled once again, and this time he looks frustrated. Sorry about that, says Esteban Reyes. Did not look deliberate by any stretch. And Urzua looks to be up and moving under his own power. So the free kick, 15 yards outside the 18, Spencer Ritchie will come and take this, and he'll be able to send it far down the field. He's got a man there looking for him, but unable to get ahead on that was Amundsen. Seattle looking to press ahead again. Now it, oh, and taken down is the man, Dumbaya. And I think this is going to be a caution. Pushing and shoving now between the man who committed the foul, which is Michael Dodds, and I can't see who was involved in green, but certainly a yellow card for Dodds. That's an easy call. A tactical foul there in a very dangerous moment now in the 87th minute. The free kick just at the top of the penalty arc, which puts it 22 yards from goal, dead center. So the gunner's wall should be set right on the penalty spot. It's about two yards too far up right now. Uh, the referee hasn't gotten that far to take a look yet, but he will move them back to the penalty spot. And this is a pretty easy one for referees. Ten yards from the arc is the spot by definition. And indeed, that's where he sets them. <laughs> and I think that's what he's telling them right now. They're saying that's too far. He's saying, look, that's the arc. This is the spot. It's pretty easy. Four men in the wall itself. A couple more white jerseys floating around. Five sounders in the box, four behind the ball. Shot taken by Ruiz, by Reyes, rather. And it deflects out of play for a throw into Seattle. That one went right off the wall, trying to get it through low. 87 and a half gone by. Just a couple of moments left here in the match, plus stoppage time. And not a whole lot. We've had a couple of small injuries and a handful of goals. And, of course, the substitutions, maybe three minutes. But we'll be guessing here as Hurd plays the ball. Easily offside this time is Justin Amundsen. No question about that one. As we are into the 89th minute now, just two minutes left in the 90. Standing over, do we have a substitution? We do. Just wondering why the Sounders weren't playing that ball, and so it, we'll see who's leaving. Brady Ballou's going to leave. So all three goal scorers have now departed for the Puget Sound Gunners. Great effort by the Seattle U-man. And we'll see who he's replaced by. Baloo's day is done with just a couple of minutes left. And we'll get you that number as soon as the new left midfielder turns around. This is number 17, Esteban Ochoa. Ball played into the box for Dubaya. Nicely played back for Johnson, but he can't turn and shoot. Hurd had a chance to control it there, but instead it goes through for Dunker. And Seattle will turn the other way. This is Lee. Amundsen chasing back, and they'll have to play it for Jennings. A little bit wide of where he wanted it, and almost getting there was Amundsen, but instead he manages to get it to his right back, and Seagal gives it to his captain. Moan with it now. Back for Biza now. Under a minute left in the 90. Seattle with a lot of work to do. Seeking ball up high in the air, looking for Johnson, and it doesn't get there. Stepping up with it is Ochoa. Into the middle, Ochoa, nice overlap run. He's got some space. 
Ochoa stops and sends it back for Amundsen now. He's got an overlap on the right side. This is Smith. Max Smith has another man. He hands it ahead for Hurd. Smith was there, but he can't give it back, and now Hurd has his shot deflected, turning toward the goal line, and it will be a goal kick. Tough to see from our angle, and another substitution now for the Gunners. We are just about through with the 90, and we will have, by the time the substitution is completed, uh, we will tell you how much time has gone by, but of course they don't tell us how much is expected, so we'll be guessing on that. And now we have had the 90. Still waiting on the substitution. It looks like Josh Hurd will exit. University of Washington man from Victoria's afternoon is done. And who is his replacement? We're still waiting to see. Meanwhile, the free kick is taken. His replacement is Fausto Ordinana. His first appearance for the Gunners this year. The sophomore from up in Upper Iowa, out of Spain originally. Half a minute gone by here in added time. We don't know how much to expect, of course. I would guess three, maybe four minutes and more maybe with the substitutions that we've been seeing, which are very clearly designed to run the clock down and referees tend to know about those things. Chuck Spaniola will add time as he sees fit. Dunker plays it in for Moan. Seattle's got to go. Three to one, the Puget Sound Gunners lead it. Wright, Ballou, and Apollo on your goal scorers. That one's defended away by Dodds. Dodds gets cleared out, and what do we have? Nothing, says the referee. We play on. Sent up high in the air by Smith. Seattle sends it back for Moan. Now it's Seagal on the right. A minute and a half gone by and added time. Headed cleanly away by Urzua. Amundsen challenging Dunker now. The seeking ball looking for Johnson, and it comes back to Dumbaya. He takes a collision there, and it falls again. Bouncing in the box. Lee is after it. Two gunners are after it. Lee wins the ball, but Matt Aronimo flicks it out, and it'll go over the touchline for a Seattle throw, and played away there. This is, this is bad news. You can't do that. The ball's out of play. Esteban Ochoa sends it up into the stands. And the referee makes it very clear. He says, I'm adding for this. Don't you worry. Wean will take this. Trying to get it long into the area. It goes over everybody. And now a long shot. That was a dangerous one. The shot by Reyes, but it's covered by Richie. And we've played over two minutes of the added time now. Play the ball, says the referee. Richie does so. Long punt. Moen sends it back forward. Now he's got Dumbaya on the left. Johnson's the runner in the box on the far post. Hansen is there too. Shot and a goal! A very late goal from Derek Johnson. And the Sounders are right back in it with very little time. It's 3-2 to two with almost three minutes gone by in the added time. And the Sounders have to go. They've got a shot, but not much of one. A goal in the 93rd, and it's scored by Johnson. I was looking around the uh, partition in the window. I don't see, I didn't see how he got the ball, but it fell to his feet about 16 yards from goal, and he put it past Richie. Kicked far to the corner. The kickoff will go out for a throw in. Johnson, the goal scorer. We've had three minutes. We don't know how many to expect. Three to two now. The Gunners still lead it. Hanging on for dear life. We kind of said it might happen this way, and this is exactly what's going on. Tense moments for the Gunners, frantic ones for Seattle, and they'll have a throw in. Johnson is indeed your goal scorer in the 93rd. No word on an assist as Dunker plays the ball. Long into the area. Dumbaya is there, and it's headed away by Aronimo. Cook sends it high into the air, but over the goal line. That's not what he wanted to do with it, and it'll be a corner. Hustling over to take it is the captain, Biza. We've played almost four minutes now. No word on what we're expecting. Chuck Spaniola looks at his watch. We'll at least have time for this corner kick. Hang on a second. What have we over here? No foul is going to be given. Is getting tied up over on the far side of the box are Ordinana and Reyes, but nothing given. Take the corner, says the referee. It's taken curving toward the far post, just over the top of Reyes. And it goes out for a goal kick. That was the chance for the Sounders. 
and it was taken by Baiza just a little bit too high. Four and a half minutes gone by and added time now. We'll take the goal kick. Spaniola looks at his watch. Play the ball, he says to Spencer Ritchie. And he does so. And that's the final whistle. Full time here at Sunset Chevrolet Stadium. And the Gunners come away with a win on the road. The final score here in Sumner, Seattle Sounders under 23s 2, the Puget Sound Gunners 3. We'll take a quick break and be back to wrap it up. You're watching Puget Sound Gunners FC Soccer on YouTube through the Premier Development. Whenever you're ready, bring it back. Welcome back to Sunset Chevrolet Stadium, where the Puget Sound Gunners hold on in tense final moments to get a 3-2 to two on the road against the Seattle Sounders under-23s. Nathan Murphy back here with you. Thanks for being with us as we start to wrap this one up. Uh, we'll go through the events here in a little bit. It was an interesting moment just after we went to break between the... Uh, Assistant referee on the near side, Tony Johnson, who was getting barked at pretty hard by the Seattle captain, Michael Biza. I'm not sure what that conversation was about. Presumably, Biza thought there should have been a foul or maybe a penalty. Of course, a foul can't be awarded when the ball's out of play. But there was that scuffle over in the corner between Esteban Reyes and Fausto Ordinana. Uh, perhaps that's what it was about. We don't know exactly what. In any case... Uh, the final score, the Gunners win this one 3-2 to two, as we'll take you through the events. Only six minutes into the game, the first goal came off the foot of Stephen Wright, but it was created by the throw-in of Kevin Cook. Kevin Cook did an excellent job of throwing this one into the box. It took a bounce. It went up to the chest of Cook, or of Wright, rather, off the throw of Cook. Wright knocked it down to his feet, turned beautifully around his man, and slotted it past Jordan Jennings, who was helpless, to stop that one, one to nothing Gunners just six minutes in. The second goal also was for Puget Sound. This was in the 51st, and it was almost the same scenario. Kevin Cook throws into the area. This one skipped just past the head of the man who had the earlier goal, right, and instead it fell to Brady Ballou. And the second year, Seawolf and Gunner slotted at home a beautiful half volley past the goalkeeper Jennings for a two to nothing lead, and that was not the end of the offense for the Gunners. Uh, just a few minutes later in the, where's my, in the 60th minute, there we have it, Ash Apollon stepped through and stole a back pass that had been intended for Seattle goalkeeper Jordan Jennings, and he stepped around Jennings and slotted it into the empty net for the Gunners' third goal of the day. It would end up being the game winner as Seattle came back with a furious effort in the second half. In the 67th minute, Mo Dumbaya took a beautiful play off the head of Esteban Reyes who had run to the goal line and headed it back. He found his teammate Dumbaya there who headed it into the goal for the first Seattle offering. Just two or three minutes later, Dumbaya had another chance this time on the right side of the six-yard box and he blasted it right off the chest of Spencer Ritchie. Ritchie a positional save there to keep it a two-goal game at that time. Seattle spent the next 20 minutes pressing, and inside extra time, they finally got one in the 93rd minute. Derek Johnson slotted at home from just above the penalty spot to make it 3-2 to two and to make things very nervous for the Puget Sound Gunners. But they would manage to hang on. A late Seattle corner kick went over the top of the man it was looking for, Esteban Reyes, and that was the last action of the match. 3-2 to two, the final score. The S Swedish of Issaquah, player of the game today, will give it to Kevin Cook, the defender. An excellent job at the right back position. And, of course, both assists as he managed to find in the box first Stephen Wright, then Brady Ballou. And those were the first two goals of the game. The player of the game presented by Swedish of Issaquah, Mr. Kevin Cook. Sounders under 23 players over on the near side here signing autographs for a group of young fans. Like to see that. A very professional operation here by the Sounders franchise. We uh, thank them for their hospitality here at Sumner, and we really appreciate what they do for us. 
A uh, couple of things we didn't get to. I want to remind you that USLPDL.com is your source for scores, stats, news, and more in the Premier Development League. You'll have the box score on this game, obviously, with lots of action. A uh, few cautions. I forgot to mention those. And, of course, five goals in this one. That will all be at USLPDL.com, or you could link to it from our website. That's Puget Sound Gunners FC. Dot com. And, of course, today's broadcast of Puget Sound Gunners FC Soccer is presented by Swedish of Issaquah. We really appreciate their support. Also sponsored by ProLiance Surgeons and ProLiance Orthopedic and Sports Medicine. And by My Spine Sports Chiropractic. Thanks to all of our sponsors for helping us get us on the air today. For Todd Elvig, our producer. For Teresa Whipple, who's the executive producer. For Josh on the camera. Nice work today. Thank you very much. I'm Nathan Murphy saying so long from Sunset Chevrolet Stadium in Sumner. Once again, your final score. The Seattle Sounders under 23s 2 and the Puget Sound Gunners 3. Good afternoon, everybody.